Hello, my friends. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to the second episode uh, in the series that I'm doing here on my channel all about decluttering and tidying and simplifying our lives uh, as well as renovating different spaces in our home. We uh, recently relocated from North Carolina to Vermont and we purchased our first home. We've been living here long enough to kind of know what we want to change, what we need improved on, the things that are working and what isn't working for us. And uh, this is the series where I take you guys along with with me throughout that entire process. So the first place that we started is the mud room. If you haven't seen episode one just yet, stop this video, go watch that episode. We got rid of a piece of furniture that we have been using in here for the last like eight or nine months and replaced it with this beautiful find that I got on Facebook Marketplace and really laid the foundation for us to make this space more functional and just more beautiful and just generally what our family needs, especially as the seasons are starting to change. We have gotten a huge snowstorm here recently and um, we're thinking it's probably gonna be one of the last like big storms that we get of the season. Slowly but surely, we are going to start transitioning into the spring months. Warmer months are ahead and the functionality of our mudroom is going to shift with the shift of the season. If you did see that episode, then you do know that the inside of this beautiful cabinet is painted this really lovely, green color and it is unfortunately uh, lead paint. So my job now is to remedy that because we are gonna be using this space. It's going to be a high touch area and I need it to be safe for me and my children because we're gonna be getting in and out of here a lot. There are two options when it comes to lead paint. One is to encapsulate it, which is totally an option and something that I'm thinking about doing. Um, secondly, you can strip it. I actually purchased this um, paint stripper for the piece that I talked about in episode one that I got this really beautiful solid wood beadboard uh, antique piece from an 18 and a house that was built in the 1800s and I got this stripper specifically for that piece but honestly I just needed to put that piece aside for now there really isn't a good place for it in the house it's really more of like a long term when we renovate our kitchen type piece um, but this piece I would like to start using sooner rather than later for starters I just want to do a test strip the issue with trying to do any of this right now is the fact that this is our mud room. So we aren't actually inside of the house. We are um, in a portion of the home that is not heated. Um, I do have a space heater that I could bring in here if need be, um, but I'm hoping it, the stripper will still do what it needs to do even though it's cold in here. <laughs> um, it's not much warmer than it is outside. Obviously, uh, it's not heated. So because of that, it can slow the process down for stripping, but we'll just have to see. The instructions say to use a foam roller, but I don't actually have one. I only have paintbrushes. So I'm hoping I can just paint it on. Um, I have stripped furniture before and used brushes and it was fine. And I brought saran wrap with me. I'm gonna just do like a test area and see how well it comes off. And if it comes off pretty easily, then we'll go this route. And if not, then we'll kind of explore the option of encapsulating the paint. Now, when I've stripped other pieces of furniture, I have put like saran wrap on top of it, like to increase the speed at which it strips. So I'm gonna do it on one portion and leave the other one and see if it makes a difference or not. The reason my saran wrap looks like this is because my children, you know, are children and they do stuff like this. It is currently almost 4.30 in the afternoon right now, so we will let this sit and do its thing and we'll see how it looks. What's helpful is that I can just close these doors and we're good to go. Put these things in here. I am gonna wash my paintbrush. And the wait time says between three and 24 hours, so it's a big range. So we'll let it sit, let it cook, and we'll come back to it in a little bit. It's later in the evening and I wanted to come out here and check on how this paint is doing. I have one of these little like wire scrubby brushes and I also have a uh, scraper. I'm gonna see how the paint is doing. It looks like it's bubbling up right there, so let's see. 
Oh yeah. Coming right off. That is such good news. I was a little bit worried that because of the low temperatures that it was gonna take a really, really long time to strip everything, but it looks like it's gonna come off super easily and there aren't too many like nooks and crannies. So I'm thinking I'm not gonna apply it tonight because it is pretty late right now, but I'm thinking that the next time Drew has the kids, I can apply it like the night before that so that I have more time to strip everything. On this day, before I was able to put the stripper inside of the cabinet, I had a couple of spare minutes during nap time to start working on painting the trim. So I got to cleaning it and prepping it and making sure it was uh, nice and ready to get primed. I am a big fan of using this really great primer and I wanted to prep these door frames and the baseboards because I know that I want to paint them. Um, and honestly, when you've got little kids, you just kind of got to do what you can do when you can do it. So I feel like this project is very not uh, linear. It's kind of haphazard and I'm just trying to get a little bit done every single day. So even if that just means getting this door frame prepped, that's what I'm going to do. So this day we made a little bit of progress, but not a ton. Hello, hello. It is a couple of days later. We have the paint stripper sitting on the inside of the cabinet and I am waiting to continue scraping. I have gotten a lot of the initial layer of paint off, but it's definitely going to require at least two coats of the stripper, if not three, we'll have to see and find out. So today's project is a little bit different. I have this little coat hook like rack that I thrifted um, a couple of months ago and we have had that rack on this wall over here where the kids have been hanging up there, uh, little brooms and mops and like little things. And it's kind of serving a purpose, but I feel like it would better serve in the mudroom. So I'm gonna put it out there, but the mudroom is full of so much wood. <laughs> Everything is some sort of wood tone that um, I really wanna paint it. So I have a ton of samples of paint from deciding what color to paint my kids' room. If you are not following me on Instagram, then you might not know all about my paint debacle. I've been trying to pick a color for their room for the last few weeks. Uh, so definitely go follow me over there because I'm always asking you guys for your opinions. You guys have such good interior design tastes that I feel like we like vibe just get each other. Oh, hi honey. So I'm gonna show you a couple of paint swatches out in the mud room just to see which one I feel like will work the best for this little like coat rack. So I actually found some other paint swatches um, from when we were painting our office. And I really, really love this one. It's a very muted brown, but it's like mid-tone muted and just really, really pretty. And I like both of these for that trim in the um, entryway or the mudroom. So I think this one will go really beautifully with either one of those. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna do this one. But the issue is I didn't write the name on the back like a rookie. So I had to figure out which one of these three samples is that one. I feel like it's this one. Maybe not. Okay. Well, fingers crossed this is the... Oh, fuck. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm so sad. This is one of my favorite shirts that I've ever had, and I wore it one time painting, which was so stupid. I got paint all over it, so it's my new painting shirt. It does look a lot like the swatch. If we have our winner, right? Yeah, that's the one. Why well, I'm a Cool. Let's do it.
cabinet that I painted a couple of days ago um, for the kids. I wanted to get it hung and then once it's hung, I'm gonna deal with the outside and seal it. Um, I want it to be low enough for the kids to access really easily, both Indie and Wilder, but I think this might be a little bit too low. So I'm actually gonna move it up a little bit so that there's room for stuff to go underneath. That should be much better. Now it's high enough that their boots can go underneath their coats and still have plenty of room. I just got done using the shop vac to clean up the whole space and get out all of the remnants from stripping all of this lead paint. So the stripping process was, I would say, a 60% success because I can't take this piece outside and hose it down with my hose. It's still way too cold to turn our hose on. It will freeze overnight if we do that. And so, yeah, I just think that it would have gone a lot better if I was able to power wash it and set it out into the sun. But because that's not an option and because we just want this space back, we haven't been able to use our mudroom since I started this project and um, we need to wrap it up. I decided to go ahead and seal on top of what is left. So if you're looking at this cabinet, you can see some of the original paint color still behind that light yellowish green color. And I thought that behind that was the wood grain, but there's actually another layer of paint behind the yellowish green color. And um, I don't know if that's lead paint or not. I assume it is since it's underneath the yellow and that one tested positive. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna encase it. I'm going to use Insulex, Insulex. I am gonna paint this on top just to really be sure that we aren't gonna have any issues with any like extra lead paint hanging around. Um, because yeah, that's no good and I don't want that. So I'm gonna do that now and hopefully we can move on with this project, be done with the cabinet and get to the other parts of the mudroom. The inside of the cabinet is totally painted. I just did a swab test to make sure that there isn't any lead paint showing through and it came back negative. Um, I haven't done the doors yet. Um, I still need to do trim around the doors. So I tested those just to make sure and like, yes, still showing lead paint around the doors. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing around the doors and then we can paint it a different color right now. Obviously it's just white. I don't know what color I'm gonna end up painting it, but I'm just glad that it's showing negative. That's a very good sign. This next project I knew I wanted to add to this space somewhere was a mirror. This is our mudroom and our entryway. And so this is like the last place you see yourself before you head out the door. So you gotta like check yourself out in the mirror, make sure you look good, get your coat, get your scarf, coutrement. I have this mirror. There's a couple of options that I was considering. I really like where all of my mirrors are right now. So I didn't really wanna move anything but I do have this mirror that I stole out of my kid's room because I am in the middle of redoing that space anyways. I had taken this mirror down behind the scenes, what it looks like to film. This is a mirror I thrifted a while back. I painted this mirror back in our um, home in Durham and I really liked the color for that space. That house was very cool tone and very gray and it's like a bluish, you know, like a steel blue gray tone. Um, and it worked for there, but I don't know that I love it in here as this color, especially not with the little cabinet that I just hung up. It's a very like muted taupe color. And so I'm thinking I might need to change the color of this mirror, which is no big deal, but it's just like another project to do but I don't know what color to do. I don't know if I wanna paint it like a neutral color or maybe like a really dark, um, even black color, or I could paint it black and then go over it with um, gold leaf and make it more of like an antique brass, which I'm kind of leaning towards because this space has a whole bunch of wood and it's gonna have a lot of painted texture to it. So we've got this painted piece, we've got the wood, um, with the cabinet that's gonna be painted on the inside as well, and then all of the hooks that are gonna be painted. So I think it might be nice to have something that has a little bit of brass to it. So that's what I'm leaning towards. But for now, I do wanna go ahead and just get it hung on the wall so that it's like out of my way, and then I'll think about it and decide, and I think I might work on it later. Hot 
too high. Hmm. Definitely too high. Yeah, let's lower that a little. And I want to move it over a little. Yes, now you can see like more of your outfit. I would even want to take it a little bit lower. Um, do I want to take it lower? The reason I wouldn't want to take it any lower is because I want to be able to use the top of the shelf right here, right? Like I still want to be able to put stuff here and it not block the whole mirror. So I'm gonna leave it for now. And we will decide if we want to paint it or leave it, but. Let's move on. I think I'm gonna check and see if the um, primer inside of the hutch is dry now. Because if it's dry, then we can move on to painting this. And I think I know what color I wanna use, but I just want everything to be nice and dry. We should be good to go. I can't believe it, honestly. Very nice. I'm honestly not even like that mad at this white. I think it looks kind of nice um, and bright, but I like things to be a little bit moodier. So I have all of these paint samples, the same ones that I used to paint that shelf. Um, and I think I'm gonna end up using this one. I'm gonna see if it looks good. So this is, wait, this isn't the one I wanted. This one is really pretty. I can test it. Oh, this is London clay. It's really beautiful. It's a little darker than I wanted to go. Um, I think something a little lighter. I do have one in mind in particular. Here's the one. This is Sulking Room Pink by Pharaoh and Ball. I love this color. And I know we want to actually use it in the house too. We just don't know where yet. It's so pretty. And I think it'll look really good in here. Drew liked it too. Oh, oh fuck, I might need Drew to open it. Oh, got it. Oh, it's so pretty. It is very, very pink in this like warm uh, wood toned space. It's quite pink. Let's do a test swatch and see. Is it too pink? I think it might be a little too pink. I'm gonna try London Clay because London Clay is really beautiful and a very similar shade, but a little bit darker. Actually showing quite true to color on camera. I'm not sure. I think that the London clay blends a little bit more, but the sulking room pink is also really pretty. I'm gonna get Drew's opinion. He likes sulking room pink. So that's what we're doing. You'll get your spotlight one day, London clay. Inside of the cabinet is drying away. I'm really liking the way that it's turned out. Really pretty. Um, I was testing out a couple of different sample paints that I have left over for the trim that I'm gonna put the hooks into. So the trim is gonna be painted all the way around. And I think I'm gonna go with Old White by Fair and Ball. I just got the color matched at Benjamin Moore whenever I was doing sample colors for another room. So I'm gonna end up using this sample to paint this trim and this trim. And I think I'm gonna end up doing it all the way around the room too, but I'm gonna start here and see if I like it. So I have this extra piece of trim. This is left over from when I was renovating downstairs and I'm gonna put it to use here. So I just stuck it in there and it fits perfectly, which is so funny. So I'm gonna take it out so I can paint it in the garage and not have to worry about like not getting it on the wood and then we'll install it. It is such a beautiful day. We haven't had a day this sunny since like way before fall. Uh, and I'm so excited about it. Okay, I just got that down and painted and it's drying in the garage. You literally couldn't even see what I was doing because it was so bright. So now Drew is upstairs putting Wilder down for his nap. So I'm going to put some music over this and just be quiet and paint away during nap time because I literally can't get anything done during nap time because I have to be so quiet. But painting is a quiet activity. That's what I'm doing. Got all the 
baseboard painted, all of the trim is painted and is drying right now. So now I'm gonna install this piece of molding. It has already been painted and is dry. And all I'm gonna use is a nail gun to do this. I don't want to use, I don't know, maybe I should. I don't really want to use any silicone just because when I, if and when I decide to take this down, I don't want it to have left behind residue on all this exposed wood. So I think I'm just gonna do a nail gun and hopefully that's enough because the um, hooks screw in through this and into the wall, into the wood. So it should be okay. I don't know. worried it was gonna wake Wilder up. So I already had these painted a different color. I thought I was gonna use a different color in here. Um, and it's quite similar. You honestly can like barely tell. Um, but I'm gonna install these first and then do my second coat of paint on here so that I can also paint these. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and fill these holes in um, and then do the last coat of paint after that's dried. Five inches might be too close together. Maybe six inches makes more sense. I also want to make sure it's level all the way across and not like super jagged. I could just get my level. Do you think that those are too close together? So I'm gonna fill that hole in, and I think I'm gonna do closer to maybe five or seven inches on center. Oh no! Oh no! Perhaps not with this one. It's unexpected. <laughs> And staying right where it is. <laughs> and moving forward, we'll increase the spacing. So on center, six. So let's see, do you like that spacing better? Yeah, that feels better. showing very um, blue gray on camera for some reason, but it is in fact creamy white. <laughs> so now I'm just gonna use some spackle to fill in all the little nail holes. Um, and once this dries, I will sand it down and I'll do another coat on the trim as well as the shaker pegs. And uh, half of them don't even have a first coat. So I will do that after I put the spackle on. I love getting the pink spackle because it just makes it really easy to know when it's dry because it changes colors and there's no guessing work involved. It's just very straightforward. <gasps> oh my God. Again, look at that.
Why do I keep hitting that one spot? So weird. Hello, hello, it is the next day. Finished everything that I needed to finish yesterday, uh, getting these pegs painted and the trim painted as well as the trim around the door. And I ended up doing all of the trim down here as well. Um, I started to do the trim on this side of the room, but I actually ran out of paint because it was just a sample. So I'm going to pick up some more paint to finish doing the trim on this side of the room. Uh, I need to finish this mirror. I need to paint the mirror. And then unfortunately, something kind of disappointing has happened <laughs> with the cabinet behind me, the hutch. So you guys know I spent a no, I'm not talking to you, Siri. So you know, I applied the um, stripper as the original base, and typically when you're using a stripper like that, you wanna like hose it down outside with either a hose or a power washer, and I had mentioned earlier that I wasn't gonna do that because it was too cold and our hose hasn't been um, connected to our outdoor faucet because our outdoor faucet is turned off. We drain the water out and turn it off over winter so that it doesn't cause any issues with our piping. So I decided to just use like a sponge and some soapy water and wipe it down. I scraped everything that I could see off, but unfortunately, <laughs> the stripper is still kind of on the cabinet itself. So I did that first coat of paint that was to encapsulate any remaining lead paint. And then I did the other coat of the sulking room pink on top. Um, but you can tell that there are certain spots that are still wet, even though it's been, I think I painted that, what was that, like 48 hours ago now, it's still showing wet. So I think, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to wait until I can get the hose reconnected, which should be soon. It's not like the end of the world. Um, when I can connect the hose, I am gonna have to spray it down to get that last remaining bit of stripper off. Otherwise, I feel like it's just gonna continue eating away at the paint and it's never gonna dry. Yeah, I think that that's where I'm gonna leave it for today's episode. Um, I think that we've crammed kind of a lot <laughs> into this episode. So I think the next episode is gonna be the third and final episode for our mudroom makeover. Um, and it's gonna include me trying to troubleshoot the stripper issue inside of the hutch. But thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and uh, being with me through this project. If you want to see more of The Mudroom, be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss the next episode. And if you haven't seen episode one, I will link it up above and in the description box for you to check out so you can follow along for the entire makeover. And I will see you in the next episode. Bye. Mm -hmm.